Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Alison. In this video, we're going to be looking at eczema and which foods can make it worse and which foods can help. In other words, which foods are inflammatory and which foods are anti-inflammatory. Before I do that, remember to like, subscribe, share and comment and also hit the notification so you know when the next video is coming out. And also, equally as important, look down below in the description and you will find those free guides that you can download. You've got the eczema more than skin deep, adult acne more than skin deep and dry skin more than skin deep. You might often hear people say, keep away from junk food, keep away from processed foods, it's all bad for you, it's rubbish. But what does it actually mean? So in a nutshell, it's looking at foods that are either refined carbohydrates uh, or simple carbohydrates. You're looking at things that are fried. You're think, looking at things that are sweet um, or just cheap meat. So I'm gonna give you a couple of, or more than a couple of examples. I'm just gonna reel it off because I've got my list on underneath the camera. We are looking at white bread gluten in the form of pasta, in the form of pastries, cakes, biscuits, Sugar is pretty much in all of these. You've got processed uh, crisps as well, crackers, refined grains, breakfast cereals, popcorn, sweets, cheap chocolate. I'm not saying all chocolate because the pure chocolate, the good quality stuff, isn't in the same category. You're also looking at deep fried foods. So when you go to McDonald's, when you go to Burger King, um, when you go to your local chipping, uh, fizzy drinks, energy drinks, um, fruit juices, uh, they've been processed previously and you buy them from the shop shelf or the fridge they are processed they are still pure sugar fructose you're also looking at some red meats in the form of burgers and things like that you're looking at sausages um, looking at um, hot dogs chicken nuggets sandwich meats because they also are processed and a lot of them are even considered carcinogenic now in other words they've got chemicals in there that cause cancer as well or being known to cause cancer um, you are looking at cheap red meat, so beef, steak, lamb, all the cheap stuff that doesn't come from a grass-fed animal because all meats cause inflammation, that's, that's a fact. But obviously, the better the quality of meat you can afford, the better for your body, the less inflammation it's going to cause. You've got margarines and spread, so trans fats, um, hydrogenated fats. You've got um, all the cheap cheese spread, the cheap yogurts. Um, I would say anything that doesn't look like it's just come from an animal, so it's not the actual cut piece of meat from the animal, hasn't been, been smoked and things like that. Anything that hasn't just come from the sea, so if you're looking at um, fish that has got crumbs on there or has been made into little sticks or something like that. Crab sticks is another example, it's got too much rubbish in there. You're also looking at fruit from the tree, which should be okay as long as it's not coated in something, as long as it hasn't been dipped in sugars. Um, you're also looking at actual vegetables as well. So it's okay to have frozen vegetables, but don't be eating vegetables that again have been like have things mixed into them. Um, sources, but some of the sources that are mixed into them that have been shop bought. If you're gonna have vegetables, get your own and then add your own sauce, your own homemade sources. Also, I'm gonna look at anything that ends in an os as being a sugar. So you're looking at fructose, glucose, dextrose, lactose, sucrose, and that is only the tip of the iceberg. Um, also, um, processed vegetable seed oil. So you've heard me mention before canola or rapeseed oil. There's also corn oil and soybean. They are all from industrially processed oils. They are manufactured. There's nothing good left in them. Keep away from them. Now, as well as mentioning sugar in this video, you've heard me mention in other videos how absolutely awful sugar can be for your body because it's inflammatory to your gut and to the rest of your body. Don't think that switching to artificial sweeteners is any better because the actual words artificial mean they are not good for your body. In other words, the body still recognises them as being a sugar because it spikes your blood sugars. However, the body doesn't know what to do with it. So again, it causes inflammation in the gut and inflammation in the whole body. Um, you've heard me say before to use local honey. Now, the reason is if you um, start using honey from the, the, the shop, um, obviously it comes in different colours, different shapes, different thicknesses. One thing they all have in common, whether they're organic or not, is they come from different parts of the EU or wherever. They get put brought together in a factory and they all get melted to become the same consistency. Now what good, what was once good about that honey, because the actual honeys are melted to become the same consistency, they have removed anything good from them. 
So all you're getting is a sweetness from there and not the actual honey, but the antibodies of the honey itself. Which is why I always say try and get locally produced honey because that's gone straight from the bee to the bee maker to you. Now, all of the foods you just heard me throw out there have one thing in common. They have a high glycemic index. In other words, they spike your insulin or they spike your blood sugar. So they're pretty much all the foods that um, a lot of diabetics are told to keep away from because you don't want their blood sugar spiking. It's the same for you guys. They're as well as spiking your blood sugar, they're gonna cause a low chronic inflammation throughout your body. They're going to inflame your gut, they're gonna inflame your skin, and they're gonna increase the levels of bad bacteria in your gut. Now you may have heard of something called leaky gut or leaky gut syndrome. And pretty much what happens is within your gut, your, you have tight junctions in the intestinal wall, but they become loose, okay? So when they become loose, bacteria gets through this gut into the, into the intestinal wall and it goes into the body's bloodstream. Now this can cause wide, widespread inflammation and this can actually happen to a lot of people more so than actually realize. Um, and believe it or not, some medical um, professionals actually still deny its existence. I have no idea why, but it is, a, it is an actual thing, so don't let anyone tell you it's all in your mind, as I've had done to me in the past. Um, if you do believe you have leaky gut, speak to a health practitioner, speak to your GP. If that doesn't work, then speak to a naturopath or a homeopath. With regards to your, your symptoms, they'll explain to you whether you have leaky gut or not. Now there's actually quite a few things that can contribute to whether you get leaky gut or not, and it could be more than one thing as well. So first of all, excessive sugar intake can cause leaky gut, as well as a non-steroid anti-inflammatory drugs. So medication can cause it as well. You have excessive alcohol intake, you've got nutrient deficiencies, um, inflammation can cause it, uh, stress can cause it, and also just poor gut health. Um, and then the last one I know can cause it is also a yeast overgrowth. So you've got quite a few different things that can trigger um, leaky gut. And once you've got it, you've pretty much got it for life, and unless you can get help from, like I said, a health, practici health practitioner, get those words out, who can help your, your gut to recover by the way you treat it. Now it isn't all doom and gloom, so bear with me on this one. So even though I mentioned that some doctors don't even recognize leaky gut as an issue, some doctors have been round to, coming round to the fact that whereas medication can't fix many things, it can only mask the symptom, food can actually be your medication. It's simply because there are also anti-inflammatory foods. Now, I'm saying anti-inflammatory foods, but what kind of diet are we talking about? We're talking about predominantly the Mediterranean type diet. So we're looking at um, foods which are high fruits, high vegetables, uh, nuts, whole grains, fish, and health, and, and I say nuts, I mean healthy nuts, not your roasted, salted, covered in all these different flavors type thing. And also I'm talking about organic nuts as well. Um, so pretty much, again, I'm gonna say anything that came direct from the animal, direct from the, the, the wild caught line caught fish, smaller fish, anything that's come direct from the ground, so the earth, and also the uh, fruit from the tree. So nothing that's been coated, nothing, nothing that's been played around with. So with that being said, that are also, um, for some eczema sufferers, those who have, uh, have, can't follow um, a FODMAPS diet um, or also a high histamine diet. So you've got people who can't have fermented oleosaccharides, disaccharides, monosaccharides and polyols as well. Um, so that people that can't have high fruit or high fermentable um, diets and also people can't have a high histamine diet so for those who've got high issues with high histamines chocolates and no no so again with that being said there's certain fruits and vegetables that are better than others uh, predominantly when it comes to vegetables the darker the leafier greens of broccoli spinach kale all those things are better for you and when it comes to fruit you're looking at berries and, the, and again the darker the fruit the better it is for you because it has more antioxidants in there so not just sticking with fruit and vegetables, also looking, like I said before, at nuts, pulses, seeds, lentils, chickpeas, all these types of things. And there's ways to make them taste really nice if you're not used to it. Now, I've mentioned it before again, I myself am not vegan or vegetarian, but five days of the week for five consecutive days, I do follow a plant-based diet myself and my children. My children not so much all the time because they don't have any gut issues when it comes to leaky gut, 
However, my son does have gut issues with his eczema. So I'm very much aware of what I'm putting in his body. Now, on top of that, I would say um, also cutting back on dairy, or having no dairy at all, because even though it's not um, considered high glycemic, it is still, it still can increase your Im immunoglobin, I can't get these words wrong, IGF-1, that's what it stands for, I need to find it a bit and I'll stick it on the screen. It can also um, cause people to break out in acne, it can cause eczema flare-ups. So yes, looking, looking to keep away from certain animal foods. And also, I've mentioned before in previous videos, eggs also can be um, reasons to flare up your, your eczema and cause problems in your gut. I myself know that I get problems in my gut as soon as I eat the cheaper eggs. So the caged chickens or the ones that are reared in a barn. Um, I seem to be okay-ish, as long as I don't go too crazy, if I have an egg from an organic source or the locally produced eggs as well. So with all that being said, what is it that's good about these vegetables or these fruits or these nuts and seeds? It's the nutrients that are in them and the anti-inflammatory effects they cause to the body. Now you just heard me mention leafy greens and berries and that is because they are high in something called phytonutrients. And phytonutrients actually help to lessen the effects of inflammation and improve the gut back, the barrier and strengthen the immune defenses. Um, so the more of these you eat, the better for your gut and the better for your leaky gut and the better for the inflammation in your body. Now, one thing I did also learn um, was about fasting. Now, it's not a uh, food, obviously, it's when you don't eat. And the reason this works is because it gives the gut a chance to rest. Now, when I say fast, I don't mean you have to then do the extreme, which is what some people do and they're happy with that, which is to not eat for several days and only have water-based drinks. What I mean is giving your gut a rest for a certain period of time throughout the day. Now, as an example, I stop eating at 7 p.m. in the evening and I don't eat again um, until I have my first smoothie at 8 a.m. So that's 13 hours I've gone giving my gut a rest. Now, in an ideal world, you shouldn't be eating up to two or three hours before bedtime to give your gut a rest. It's not working overtime trying to, to, to to clear out the food or push the food through whilst you're asleep. So if you can, try not to snack, try not to eat heavy meals. And also, it's best to eat, if you can, the heavier meal during the day and the lighter meal in the evening, or depending on what your hours are of work, eating the lighter meal three hours before bedtime. Now, fasting is growing in popularity because you can do small windows of fasting. You can do it through the night whilst you're asleep, so it doesn't really impact on your day. Now, the reason people are doing this is because it gives your gut the chance to heal, which means it's common the inflammation down in your gut, the inflammation down in your body, and therefore the inflammation on your skin as well. Now, that is it for anti-inflammatory and inflammatory foods and the way they affect the leaky gut or just the gut in general. What I will do is if you look in the description below, I'll give you a link to a list of inflammatory foods and also a list of anti-inflammatory foods, because I'm sure they will help. I'm going to also look for a, uh, a website for you guys that will help teach you about fasting and the different types of fasting. So with all that being said, remember to like, subscribe, share, comment, hit that notification so you know when the next video is coming out. And don't forget to look below in the description to find all those different links to information that you're going to find really, really helpful, including the free uh, e-guides that you can download. I'll see you on the next video. Bye for now.